Okay, this is video two for chapter three. We're going to talk about some adjusting entries for accruals. Okay, we just defined accruals in the last video. And remember, this is our, I should have it labeled as our unadjusted trial balance. This trial balance, if it does it looks familiar, it should. It's the any trial balance or the unadjusted trial balance we created in the prior chapter. Um, so these numbers should all be familiar to you. Um, okay, accrued revenues. So the example the book gives for accrued revenue, it says that Net Solution signed an agreement with Danker Company on December 15th. The agreement provides Net Solutions will answer computer questions and render assistance to Danker Co.'s employees. Services will be billed on the 15th of each month at a rate of $20 per hour. As of December 31st, Net Solutions has provided 25 hours of assistance to Danker Company. So I've got this contract and it's December 15th. Well, now it's the end of the month, December 31st. I want to put the revenues that I earned in December into December, the month of December, like it should be. Um, they bill out $25 per hour, even though this bill is not going to be sent, by the way, until the next month, until 15th of January. I still need to record the revenue that pertains to December in December. Um, so they have the service contract, $20 an hour. Um, as of December 31st, there was 25 hours of work. So now I need to figure out how much I need to record this for. Well, I took my uh, $20 per hour times 25 to get 500. That's the total amount of revenue earned in December. Um, and how do I book that? I book it just like I book any other sales on account where I've got accounts receivable as my debit. I'm increasing an asset. Of account, the asset of accounts receivable, the debit of 500, and crediting fees earned uh, with a credit of, or increasing fees earned with a credit of $500. Um, and obviously I balance, so I'm good for the adjusting entry. So this just makes sure that the earned fees for December are in December as they should be. Accrued expenses. Okay, so accrued expenses. This, the example to give here is payroll. So it's not uncommon for payroll to be paid, um, could be paid weekly, could be paid every two weeks, could be paid twice a month, could be paid monthly, lots of different ways and methods that people uh, do payroll. This particular company pay, pays every two weeks or bi-weekly. Um, so it talks about Net Solutions. Uh, it says that they had a payroll, and they got the, the dates in here. They had payroll, and the, the first payroll for December went the 2nd through the 13th. Um, that should have already been recorded as an expense. The second payroll went 16th through the 27th. That again should already be recorded as an expense. But this third one where we've got two days in December, the 30th and 31st, that are part of this same payroll, um, but are split between January and December. Um, so we got the 30th, the 31st, and then all the way through the 10th of January. Well, I need to make sure that I'm recording the expense for that, for those wages, even though I've not paid them yet. I need to make sure I record those expenses in December because that is when the work was done. That's when the employees did the job. That's when the employees earned my revenues to go back to the matching principle. So I need to make sure that it goes into the proper month. So how I do that is it specifically tells us that uh, December 30th and 31st have a total of $250 worth of wages owed to employees. So I debit wages expense to increase the expense account. Um, to put the expense into December as it should be. And then because I have not paid it yet, I credit a new liability account called wages payable. So it just means that it's wages that I owe to my employees um, that they have earned and the expense has been incurred, but I have not yet paid, uh, paid the employees. So that's wages payable. Now on January 10th itself, to show how this is gonna work when I actually pay the payroll, um, I'm going to debit wages expense. The total payroll the book says is 1275, so that number was given. 1275 was a given number, um, which means 250 of that was from December, and the other 1,025 was from um, January. Um, so I'm gonna debit wages expense, and this will put this into January, because notice the date on this is January 10th. I'm gonna uh, debit wages payable, that gets rid of this liability, because now I'm paying it. But I still have that expense back in December like it should be, this is January now. Um, and then I have, my cash uh, decreasing with a credit of $1,275. So that is a, a uh, accrued wages uh, journal entry. Now what that looks like from a T account perspective, so wages expense, we have a debit for 250 and we have another debit for 1,025, but if I was making my financial statements in December, it would just be the 250. 
wages payable would have a credit or yeah, a credit of 250. Um, so in January, if my year is starting over, if I assume my fiscal year is starting over and we haven't done this yet, but I would close out wages expense um, for the year. Uh, so basically I would zero it out. So then after that, after I zero out my expense, I don't zero out liabilities, I only zero out uh, what we call temporary accounts. My wages expense for January would be 1,025 on the debit side. I would debit my wages payable to make that zero, balancing that zero, and obviously I have my credit to cash. So these are the T accounts for those two accounts. And we'll stop that video here and we'll continue with chapter three in the next video.